Live works for us. Good morning, peeps. Get my coffee mug here. Hopefully you had a good weekend. Yeah? Good? Good? It asked me to tag friends. I'd rather not. I gotta put on a tie later, so I gotta look the part today. Even trimmed up the scruff a little bit. Yeah, I hope you had a good weekend. Jeff will be coming over a little bit. We've got uh, some audio from Todd Terrell about the uh, threat that was on social media. So I'm going to show you this. We've had people, we've had people in studio that have wanted to know about the frother. This is the frother. So. You put your coffee in your favorite coffee mug and uh, dial in. I don't even know if I can bring this down. Can I? Can people bring this down a little bit so you can see the coffee being made? Okay, there you go. All right. So I put my little sweetener in. 90 seconds, big man. Okay. And then you have a little bit of the cream. Hey, it'll be right at the last second, but I'll be there. Right at the last second? Fine. I mean, honestly, honestly. So then you have this little thing, little button, AA battery, and it spins, and we get the foam. There you go. And a little foam in your coffee. That's it. That's the frother. Yeah, everybody should have one. It just makes the coffee better. So I'm ready to talk to Jeff now, if, if he's only ready. Good lord, jefe. Get over here. Hmm. <clears throat> we are going to have some audio. So the audio that we'll hear, I've got to make sure we can turn off the uh, on-air lights so that people on Facebook can then also hear the audio. We'll see how that works. Crap, I forgot to print out the script. I'm going to be winging all of this. You're going to be winging all of it? Winging all of it. You go to be a professional. Alright, it's going to be a little bit of 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 a all right, sports fans, we are back with another edition of Behind the Headlines. Thanks to those folks, uh, folks watching online. It is 645. We've got 59 degrees right now. Jeff Lane's joining me from the newsroom. And I know we've got a lot to get to, but first and foremost, I thought, um, I thought both of our football teams played pretty well for the first game of the season. Yeah, surprisingly yeah. well. Both came away with L's, but I think uh, yeah. if there's such a thing as a good L. Yeah, Okay. that's right. I mean, that's, a, that's exactly what it is. So... Uh, Colts and Bengals are off their season, and I was, I think I, I'm supposed to exercise 30 minutes, according to my Apple Watch, and by about 4 in the afternoon, I looked down, and it said 2. <laughs> That's how much activity I got yesterday. Yeah, yeah so. Um, all right, so we did have some serious news overnight. I guess we should start there, yeah? Uh, yeah, we, did, we, we will, and I spoke just about 20 minutes ago with uh, Superintendent Todd Terrell of the Richmond Community School System. And uh, if you're just joining us, let me kind of back up and tell you uh, kind of the timeline of how this all happened. At about uh, 10, 10, 15, somewhere in there last night, uh, Terrell was notified about a threat that had been made on social media. Um, a student had posted, um, uh, had posted the threat. It was fairly nonspecific, uh, but some of the students, some other students who received or saw that threat uh, alerted their parents and the parents then alerted the proper authorities, including the police department, sheriff's department, and, uh, and the school system. Uh, all those entities acted very quickly. The student was taken to police headquarters along with a parent. Um, a cell phone was, was looked at. I don't know if uh, police still have it or not, but a cell phone was, was certainly looked at. And then at around midnight, Terrell posted a statement on the RCS Facebook page, uh, probably some other places as, as well, kind of notifying parents about the threat but also saying that there was uh, no threat this morning. And uh, I, the question I asked him uh, was one that 
I think a lot of parents have this morning, and, and that is, how can you be sure? Can you maybe elaborate on how you're able to say that with confidence? Yes, yeah, so last night, um, RPD uh, made a thorough investigation of the situation, and uh, through that investigation, they were able to inform us that there was no uh, viable threat to the high school today, and any individual who was making such a threat uh, will no longer, uh, will not be at RCS today. All right, that again is Tom Terrell just about 25 minutes ago or so. Uh, now, there will be an extra police presence at Richmond High School today, along with, uh, I believe, a couple of other, or maybe possibly all the school buildings. Uh, but that, that is about the gist of it. And, um, you know, obviously, Phil, with what happened last year, uh, all these kinds of things are taken very seriously. Look, I do not know a school system that has handled these types of things better than RCS. Now, I would also say that they were lucky in some cases with the incident, but the See Something, Say Something initiative and how they have worked together as a team is unparalleled. And uh, I appreciate Todd letting us you know, message him in the morning, <laughs> wake right. him up. I mean, he, if you're getting a statement out at midnight, you're not quite going to sleep. But they handled those threats seriously. And, and kids are going to have to learn. We're not playing games anymore. There's, there's no such thing as uh, a joke when it comes to this this kind of stuff. And, and we just have... We, that's just where we're living. That's just how things are today. And, and, and if you have a student in a school system other than Richmond, and you don't think that this could happen at your school, you are silly. And uh, Richmond, I feel very comfortable having my kid in Richmond Community Schools. I think it is a safe place to be. Right. And, and you know, I've seen, I've seen some of the comments on social media from some parents, and, and quite frankly, I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, and the comments are so, are things like this. Well, I'm going to keep my kid home today anyway. Nope, nope. It's, that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Your, your kid is much safer today yes. than he or she was on Friday right. or on Thursday. That's it. This is the safest time to send your kid to school, not the most dangerous. Right. And so keeping them home, not only is it ridiculous just from a, a nuts and bolts standpoint, I, I just don't like the idea of, uh, and I'm speaking as the parent of a high school student, that we cower down to these kinds of things. I know you take them seriously, yes, but you don't cower down to that nope. kind of stuff. Nope. So good job, RPD, and any other law enforcement involved. Thanks, Todd, for keeping up uh, us informed, too. So great. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Uh, just a couple of other things I'll hit on real quick. Um, a couple members of the Richmond Fire Department are back. They were part of the Ohio Task Force 1 that went uh, southeast in, in advance of Hurricane Dorian. They actually started way south and basically followed that thing up the coast. Uh, they traveled 2,400 miles. Those two guys got back over the weekend. I'd love to talk to them and see what they're, what what they think about that kind of severe weather. Because I don't think you, you really get a real just of it by just listening to reporters stand out in the wind. You know, right. getting in there and seeing somebody, I think, would be it'd be an interesting interview. Yeah, and the, the initial comments from some of the guys on the task force, uh, not these two from Richmond, but specifically where they were they were sent down there in, in preparation for the worst, but yeah. really they, they weren't needed, which they were they were obviously glad for. Sure. It, it, the question is, would you want to live on the beach? Eh. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want to. It's a nice place to visit, but I don't want to go there. Kind of like New York City. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, uh, and then tonight, um, we'll, we'll wrap with this one. Tonight is a uh, big zoning hearing in Fayette County. Oh, Northern boy. Fayette County is the site of this proposed CAFO. A lot of people up in arms about this one. Um, the the guy. What's going on is a guy put up a picnic table in his shelter, is calling it a public recreation center uh, to try to stop this CAFO. The meeting tonight is so big, they're actually holding it at the high school auditorium. I think what we should do is while they're having that meeting, you and I should grab some Lee's famous recipe and go head out to that picnic table and just sit and hang out. <laughs> <laughs> and just go, well, we'll see if it's a public park. I'm just going to, we're just going to have some chicken hang out. There you go. I'm down. <laughs> All right. Our question of the day. If you were mayor of this fair city, what's the first thing you would do? Did you, did, let me tell you what Mike Hauser said on Facebook. Yeah. He goes, I'd kick myself in the butt. Why the hell did I take this job? <laughs> I was just going to say something like that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, what would you do? And I'll tell you what I, what I commented on and how people are yelling at me already. Are, are they really? Well, they're right. just, I, 
I said you, the first thing to do is you've got to make up for lost revenue because of the state property tax caps. You're not going to grow the population in order to recover that money. You have a lot of infrastructure needs. Um, so I was going to pass the food and beverage tax. It's a, it's a longer strategy to bringing in more things like casinos and um, developing other areas like the west side. You've got to get more money in house to be able to do those things. And right now the city's uh, their proposed budget for next year is like about an $800,000 deficit. So that's what I would do. I, I would raise taxes, which, obviously, that has caused a, a kerfuffle. <laughs> if, you, <laughs> yeah. if you do that, you need to come reprogram my cash registers, because I don't know how to do that. that no, it's, uh, but, but and, and look, as a business owner, I get why that's like, whoa, 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 you can't hit me over the head. I've got tariffs I'm dealing with. I've got increase in, in cost of goods. I get it. I promise you, we can get more people into the community but we've got to make up for some of those property tax caps. I voted for the tax caps. I I would be fine if we could somehow institute a regular gas tax. Um, but you know that's that's just what I would do. Yeah. So, but I I get it. I get why people would say you're a clown. We don't need an increase in taxes. Well, I don't think you could fix Richmond by hoping for a whole bunch of businesses to relocate. Yeah. So. Yeah. Hmm. All right, that's where I am. Okay, that, okay. is that it? Are we done? I think so. <laughs> well, that was easy. Yeah. All right, again, thanks to, um, Thanks for calling uh, the superintendent and getting all that information out there. It's uh, very important that we get the right information and convince parents to take those kids to school. Thank you, Jeff. All right. All right. Facebook friends, thank you so much for uh, being a part of this. Now, there may be some people that... Um, aren't on Facebook. So here's what we've been doing. We've been taking these videos, pushing them over to the YouTube page, and then also posting them on my blog. Um, so the, my blog is still at 1017thepoint.com, but um, you can you know, share those things or whatever. We, we, if I can get to 100 subscribers on YouTube, and you just go, you just Google Phil Quinn on YouTube, uh, if I get to 100 subscribers, then we get to do a URL so that people can find us easier. So that's good. Um, all right, so that's what we've got. Kate from the city of Richmond's coming up here at the top of the hour. We've also got a guy that's coming in who is wanting to put an orchard in Mary Scott Park. James Barber, Dr. Barber, I think, or Barbary. Eh, not quite sure. All right, but that's what we've got for today. Thank you all. Appreciate it. We will see you on the other side of the day. Well, hell, I don't know. I, I talk like I'm on the radio, but I'm not. I'm on video. It's really stupid.